My name is David Hernandez, and you're listening to As the Pokeball Turns. Welcome to another episode of As the Pokeball Turns. Today is episode 15 of Trainer's Eyes, a segment where we get to hear from you, the community, on how your Pokemon Go journey started, where it has been, and where it is currently going. When Pokemon Go was first introduced back in 2016, it pitched the idea of imagining a brand new reality where Pokemon existed in the real world. Whether we explored a city, a mountain basin, or a historic chateau in France, Pokemon would no longer be bound to a game system, but would finally live alongside us through AR technology. As the game has evolved and changed over time, the AR functionality has arguably been used only for a faster quick catch. However, a community of players have embraced the AR technology provided by Niantic and have utilized it to create inspiring photos unifying the real world with Pokemon. Before the community, there existed one player who stood alone. While many players chased XP, Stardust, Shiny Pokemon, and eventually PvP, she entered the world of AR photography in hopes of finding others who had a passion to snap AR photos just as she had and continues to do so to this day. Furthermore, with both her love for Pokemon and her love for science, she has combined the two with AR photography to demonstrate that not only was science for everyone, but was also everywhere whether it is the real world or the AR world of Pokemon Go. Here is her origin story into the world of Pokemon Go and AR photography. This is Shiny Shink Science. Today, I am joined by Shink Science. Shink Science, welcome to the show. Hello. Thanks for having me. So as I'll start with every one of my guests, when did you first start playing Pokemon Go? Well, the actual playing of it started like the very first day, so July 6th of 2016. But I was already very interested in the game when they first announced it. I actually started getting into it with that first trailer. And then I was like, but what happens now? Who's talking about this now? We need to talk about this game that's going to be great. And then I started diving into the very few people who did content before the game actually launched. So by the time it came around, I already knew a bit of how it was going to work. Like from the beta testing and stuff, I was so looking forward to it. I knew somehow that it was going to change the way I related to life. What was it like for your community when the game first started? Like, were there a lot of people out playing and stuff like that? For the AR community, I remember there was basically nobody taking AR photos and posting them in like on Instagram. Like I checked all the hashtags and the ones that I could find, like hashtag Pokemon Go, hashtag Pokemon Go photography. So I checked everything and I expected to see a lot of photographs, a lot of content, but there was almost nothing. So yeah, at the beginning, it was kind of quiet, which was surprising for me. Before Pokemon Go came out, did you have any familiarity with the Pokemon franchise in general at all? I used to watch the anime when I was a kid, but that was it. Like, I never played the games myself. I think it was the first time I moved outside of my country. Then I felt myself having a lot of free time because I didn't have my family. I didn't have my friends. So I was like, well, I need a new hobby. And then I ended up picking up the games for myself and like diving into Pokemon content as well. Because I have free time and I needed something to do. And that was when I was around 20 years old. Ever since then, I think I've grown more and more attached to the franchise. Now, you said you didn't play the games growing up. Was there a particular reason why? Did you not like playing the games at all? Yeah, I guess I sort of was not allowed to play video games. I mean, it was called a Game Boy. So why were my parents supposed to think? Oh, so your parents wouldn't let you play. At the end, like at the end of my childhood, I was like, maybe they would have if I had insisted enough. I just felt that it was like something that was not right for me to do. I don't know why. So you felt, so you felt that video games were more of a boy thing and not really something for girls? Yeah, yeah. And what changed your mind when you grew older to eventually just dive into the video game franchise? I had always wanted to try, but the thing is I couldn't buy a console for myself until I had like some monies. So now I was like, I'm going to buy the games for myself now. So I always (laughs) wanted to play anyways. 
Do you remember what your first game was? It was silver. It was silver. Oh my god. And I had no idea how they worked. So like, if you don't know how Pokemon games go, like they give you very small hints. Like you have to go here, but just very small hints, especially like the earlier games. So I just didn't know where to go. And I got stuck. I think when you had to like wire the Sudowoodo to like unblock the next path or something, I didn't know what to do. So I got stuck and then I stopped playing. <laughs> Picked up another one. Yeah, it was okay. That's awesome. I know that you love electric types, right? Oh, yes. Now, if you were an electric type gym leader, who would be your team? Whee! I think I've thought about that quite a lot. I've given it quite a lot of thought. So you'll be a team of six. I think something like Luxray for sure. Then Electivire, Raichu, Pachirisu, Dedene, and Hisui and Volter. That's not a bad solid squad right there. They're all so cute. <laughs> what is it about the electric type that, I guess, sparked your interest? Sparks my interest. I'm, I'm not sure. I find it quite related to science, both in the anime and in main stories in the Pokemon Go franchise. Like, electricity is always tied to science, and that makes a lot of sense for me. I find it personally also tied to life itself, because if you understand how the human body or like any animal works, it's based on electricity. So we are alive because there's electricity. Our heart is pumping because of electricity. I just associate it with life and science. Staying on the topic of science, like when did your interest in science first begin? Mm, I guess I was born like this. I noticed when I was young, I would do things like count how many advertisements would be, and just gather data myself. So I was watching TV, and then I'll count the type of advertisement that would appear in the middle of the TV, the cartoons that I was watching. I would just start keeping count of them and like analyzing things. And I think that's just how my brain works. So it just sounds like just science was ingrained in you and just the curiosity and just trying to figure out how the world works? Yeah, yeah. So I got to ask you this. In your opinion, is there a Pokemon that makes no logical sense on how it should exist? There are so many. There are so many. What are some that just come to mind? You don't have to tell me all of them. Not the Pokemon itself, but like their Pokedex entries make no sense. Absolutely no sense. Vaporeon, for example, it says that Vaporeon can fuse with the water. So like it can transform into liquid water or somehow water can flow through Vaporeon. I just don't understand how that works. But that's what the Pokedex says. Do you think there is a way people can learn science through the world of Pokemon? Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, there's so much. The basics of science are there and are in front of us. There's a professor that got some kind of qualification and he gives you an encyclopedia and he says, look at this encyclopedia. There's a lot of information in it. And then Pokemon appear in different biomes and things happen to them depending on where they are. There's a lot of science in the Pokemon franchise. A lot. Now, I have one last question about science, and I want you to complete the sentence to fill in the blank. Without science, the world is blank. Without science, the world is quiet. Maybe because I'm too deep into it, but there's a lot of things in science. Like Science is the way that we figure out what we don't know. And there's so many things that we don't know. And there's so many people working in every single tiny thing we don't know. And there's all these people trying to figure things out to make things better for the next generation or the current generation, whatever. And then also science is also the idea, in my opinion, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Science is the idea of also of exploration because you'll have to look into things that people don't understand or we may not know right away. In the same concept, that's how Pokemon Go is. It encourages the exploration, encourages trying to get to know your world better than your previous generation or even past people knew. I like that parallelism. I really like it. No, definitely. Exploring what you don't know or exploring a new place or exploring new area that you don't know. Now, moving back to Pokemon Go, what sparked your interest when it came to AR? When Pokemon Go came out, there were two things you could do. You could catch Pokemon, then you could look at them in your storage. And the other feature that was out was the camera. There was no PvP, there was no trading, there was no body system, there was nothing. The only thing that there was was a camera. The first encounter with like your starter and everything, it forced you to do it on AR. The game already set us trying to subtly through the hint of like, use this thing you call AR. So then my next Pokemon, which was not my starter, I also caught it in AR. And then I took a picture because I thought it was really cool. I wanted to remember about it. And then the next day I went somewhere else next to the seaside, I think. And I was like, well, now I'm having a, a very nice view. Like I was catching these other Pokemon and now I like this view. So let me again take this one photo to remember. And that's how I started taking my photos. 
just let me take this one photo to remember this moment or let me take that other photo to remember this moment. And in the end, I had so many of them that I was like, wait, what would happen if I lose my phone or if I lose all my photos? <laughs> and then that's what caused me to start posting them just in case I lose them somehow. For sure. And you spoke about it earlier, like when you joined Instagram, there was nobody else doing AR photography. How did it feel to be kind of on your own at that point? I always assumed that there will be people just that I couldn't find them. But like slowly, slowly, and especially when AR Plus started rolling out. So like at the beginning, there were no angles, there was no depth. When AR Plus started rolling out, there were a lot more new accounts popping in. And then, I don't know, a couple of years after that, when Go Snapshot popped in. So not only being able to photograph wild Pokemon, but any Pokemon from your storage. Nowadays, people forget that there was a time when we could not snap just any shiny, any Pokemon from our storage. But that only appeared in 2019. So like when that came, even more people came around like to AR and somehow like it started growing and growing. And now there's so many of them. There's a lot of AR photos nowadays. I love looking at them. I wish I had talent you guys have because it's amazing. The different angles and different. It's incredible. Like just surfing through my feeds, both on Twitter and on Instagram, that just makes my day. There's so much creativity and so much care in every single piece that any AR photographer or AR editor or whoever, there's so much care in everything that they do. It's such a craft. And just seeing the result of all these people putting all that effort out there, that just simply makes my day every single day. Do you have any notable people you'd like to give a shout out or just to mention that people should Oof. check out when it comes to AR Oof. photography? <laughs> Not that many, okay. <laughs> I would be giving you names for 15 minutes straight. There's no way. Just, uh, you could check out some of the hashtags, like, for example, hashtag go snapshot or mm-hmm. hashtag, I don't know, uh, on Twitter, AR of the day. When it comes to taking an AR photo, can you like describe to me your approach and what you do when taking a photo? Discuss this with all the different AR photographers and all of us do it different. But what for me is most important, what triggers for me the creativity or the photo is the landscape. So the actual place where I'm at. So I looked somewhere and I'm like, this place is real cool. Do you know how it look much cooler if I place a Pokemon then? Once I'm in a setting, I'm like, I need to put a Pokemon here. Which Pokemon would fit? That's the next question. So I'm like, am I near the water or am I near forest or am I in the city somehow? So then I personally, and I give this recommendation to whoever wants to do AR photography or anyone really who is interested. So I have a tag. So the same tags that you have for like Pokemon I want to trade or Pokemon I want to put for level 50s. So I have a tag that's called Pokemon I want to take a picture of. So then I go to that tag and I filter by like water or like by water and grass or by like just shiny, for example. So then I surf through until one of them sparks my interest and I'm like, oh, this one would fit. So then I just place it in there. And once you place it, then you need to think about the angle. So Pokemon's now placed and the background's nice. Now what angle would look good in here? Like, should I go this way? Should I go that way? Now what animation? Then let me tap on the Pokemon and see the animation. Oh, this one would be cool. How about if I tap but take the photo right in the middle of the animation? Oh, that makes it look different. Let me look again. Then I take, I don't know, 25 photos of the same Pokemon in the same place with the same thing. And I usually get tired then. I'll confess it. I get tired and I'm like, well, whatever. I'll just pick one of the other ones. So then I go and look at all of the 25 pictures that I've taken. I'm like, "Mm, I like the composition of this one. And then I choose that one. There's for sure people who take way more time into planning and like using the rule of thirds. That's very important in photography too. I try to do that, but not too much because it's really time consuming and it's also like battery consuming. Today I was taking air photos and 25% of my battery was gone in 15 to 20 minutes. So I just can't afford it. But I'm sure some other people persevere until they get the perfect shot that they had in mind. Well, speaking of the perfect shot, I know you have a photo dex. How do you decide which Pokemon to take a photo of when or is it just kind of a spur of the moment kind of thing? So in that photo decks, I'm more or less aware of the empty spaces. So I have all the empty spaces, like for example, Ghastly. If Ghastly is missing, then I have it on my tag, on my inventory on Pokemon Go. When I'm somewhere and I filter by, I need to take a picture of all my ghost Pokemon. Let me look at them. Oh, Ghastly would fit nice. So then that day, I'll finally put it on the photo decks. But until I find the perfect place or like a a place that inspires or that shouts ghastly to me, that doesn't shout any other Pokemon, then I'll just keep waiting and waiting. And that's how my photo decks is not complete yet. 
So it sounds like you live your life normally, but when you find some particular spot, whether it be like by the seashore or maybe a building or what have you, then you look through the Pokemon that you feel like would be the best fits. And then that's when you start doing the photography, right? Definitely. Definitely. And I also need to be like in the headspace. Like I cannot be in a hurry or like doing groceries. You don't want to take a picture of maybe a milk tank by the butcher? No, not enough space. Like AR photography needs a lot of space, right? I need a lot of good space and I need good light too. That's why I like taking pictures on nature because mm-hmm. yeah, too much space. And then I'll get in the way of everyone else. So it's not the best idea. Well, one thing that's interesting about your photography is you actually include scientific facts on your photos. Was that something you've always done or is that something you added as you continue to take photos? Oh, that I added. And I think it might have been 2019 or so when I realized like there's no way that I'm going to stop ever taking AR photos. So then I thought I might as well try to turn it into something that's more unique to me or like that represents me better as a person. Just something that only I can do because I'm not a good digital artist. So I'm not good at photography itself or at like editing. I thought the thing that I knew best was science. So I work in academia at a university and they tell you one of the best things you could do for yourself would be to write 10 minutes of something, but do it every day. And then you'll get better at like putting the words in the right places and conveying the message in a way that you want to convey, which is something very important when we write scientific papers. So I'm like, well, it didn't say I had to write about something I didn't like. So I'm going to put that together with my hobby of taking pictures. And that's how that came about. So obviously you're into AR photography. Like, why is it so important to have AR photography in Pokemon Go? What role do they play in the community? It's difficult because at the beginning, I thought AR was one of the core values of the game itself. So just being able to turn on the camera and see the Pokemon in the real world, that was one of the main selling points of Pokemon Go back in the day. But today, it's a bit different. And honestly, like lately, not sure at all what role are we playing anymore because there hasn't been any updates to like AR for like more than a year. Like nothing has changed in like more than a year. There's no goals. There's nothing to strive for. If you take AR photos, there's no like recognition. And I feel that there's no like infrastructure, not infrastructure really, but there's nothing we can go about with it. There's so much that could be done with AR. Like when they did this collaboration with the TGC and they did this uh, Pokemon Go card, well, there could have been AR photos there. I remember in the past they've done photo contests. Those were great. There was so much creativity just flowing. But at this point, I am not sure. And the reason that I'm not sure is that I think Niantic is not sure what the AI community could do. We're just doing our thing because we like it. But there's so much more that could be put in place for us. One thing I would love for them to do, I would like for them to do a contest to where whoever wins actually gets Pokemon cards created out of their photography. Oh, that would be so good. Yeah. What if they did like a crossover between Pokemon AR photography and Pokemon TCG for our next Pokemon Go set? I think that'd be sick to see, in my opinion. Definitely. The thing that I've been like thinking about since the Snapshot contest, I think that was in 2019 as well, it's complicated to decide who's the winner. So it's not like PvP. There's not a set of rules that can be followed and then everyone agrees that this is the winner. With photographs, it's way more subjective. So I'm not sure competitive would be the best approach because everything is good. There's no way to determine who's the best at photography. So that's why I think lately, everything that Niantic has done with like AR, it's been picking random winners. Uh, for example, I, I don't remember, there were some fashion contests. They just pick random winners now, which is like, okay. But I've been working on this skill set and lots of people like me, we have been working on this skill set for like years. And whatever random winner you're picking... Okay, but it kind of defeats the purpose of being interested in good AR in the first place. Because sometimes they just retweet random photographs that's like, okay. But if you're really deep into AR, that's not a good AR photo. I see that and I care. Most people probably don't. But I'm like, we have standards in the community. We have things that look good and things that are like, you tried and that is a great photo, you know, but it's not, it's not, it's not awesome. (laughs) Well, then also it doesn't highlight what the AR community is capable of. If they just highlighted some of the better AR photography, it gets people an idea of what it's possible to do with the photos. I think if somebody who maybe didn't know AR photography to begin with just saw that, would easily be inspired to just try to capture the same moment. 
it's so inspiring. The reason that I'm still doing AR photography is how inspired I am every day just by seeing photos of every other person in the AR community. They inspire me to take photos. I took horrible pictures at the beginning. Horrible. The worst that could ever be taken. That was me. And I, I just continued being inspired by seeing other people's creations. And that's the reason that I'm still here. Do you have any idea of some things you would like to see added that's not currently present for just AR photography? So many of them. One of the ones that I think it would be easier to implement, it would just have a photo dex in the app. When I take a picture, just let me save it and attach it to my own Pokédex. And then I'll have my photo there. There's also like some technical things like allow me to move the Pokémon or allow me to flip the lighting or just solve all the bugs and all the things that aren't working currently. Just with that, I'll be satisfied. One thing I would love to see, and I forgot this was a thing until I read some of your information. It would be nice for y'all to be able to take photos with battles. Oh, yeah. I forgot that was a thing until I saw one of your stories. And that was eventually taken out, I think, under the new gym rework. And it never came back. It never came back. It's so sad. Like, I didn't use it a lot because it used to consume a lot of my battery. And back in the day, my phone was even worse than the one that I have now. But that was really cool. And I don't know why it went away. Back in the day, okay, it was maybe too much for the technology, but that was 2016 or 2017. So I'm sure the technology has advanced to like, we could have that again. It was neat. It was. It was very cool. And for people who maybe came to this game after the gym rework, they missed out. I hope that someday Niantic does add AR battling because I think that'd be something cool to interact with. And can you imagine a Pokemon trying to attack and trying to take a photo that way? And seeing the animations perhaps also in AR, like different people being able all to see the same battle. Well, that would be so cool. Now, if somebody was listening to this podcast and they wanted to dip their toe into AR photography, what advice would you give them? Mm, don't think it twice. Just start posting. I've run into so many people who are like, oh, I take these pictures, but I don't want to show them to anybody. Like, there are concerns about privacy. Like if you take a photo of like your own bedroom, I understand that you don't want to show that to anybody. But if there's something you find yourself doing, don't be shy and get yourself out there and start posting your pictures. There's so many nice people who really want to see them. I really want to see everyone's AR pictures. That brightens up my days. I want to see everybody taking photos. It doesn't matter if they're good, bad, if you think that's crappy or not. My photos were crappy too. It doesn't matter. But like, don't give it too much thought. Just put them out there. Now, you've actually attended the past GoFest. Tell me about it. What was it like to go to your first GoFest? Before the pandemic, I had always wanted to go. But they were too far from me. And by too far, I mean really far. Like, I would be spending too much money on just getting myself there. I knew all these people from the AI community who had always gone and they've always said, stop thinking about it, just go. You have to go. It's something you have to experience. So I'm like, okay, that was like before 2020. The next one I'll go for sure. And the pandemic happened and I'm like, well, I wish I had gone before. So like when this year they were back in person, I'm like, I just must go. There's no good excuse for me to not go because every year I live vicariously through the pictures of people who went and I'm like, I wish I had been there. So I went completely alone, honestly. I didn't travel with anybody. So I just showed up because there's so many people. If you've been in the community for long enough, you know who's going to be there. Even if they're not like your closest friend, you've got people. You'll be surrounded by a community of people who loves Pokemon Go so much in these events. It's not like playing in your local community. It's like the hype and the level and how deep people are into the game is just different. No matter what you say or do, you're surrounded by potential friends. Now, if somebody was listening, considering going to the GoFest, what would you tell them? Just do it. Stop giving yourself excuses and just go. You're going to enjoy it. If you're listening to this podcast, you're, you're deep enough into the Pokemon Go stuff. You're going to like it. Do you have any goals moving forward in Pokemon Go? Like, do you have some things that you're just working towards? I'm working towards eventually getting to every corner in the planet. I mean, it's an ambitious goal, but just keep traveling and keep visiting new places, keep spinning new Pokestops. I just want to see how the playground of Pokemon Go looks in other places. Do you have any particular spots in mind? Japan, number one. I also want to go to Singapore so bad and like also everywhere else. So we're almost towards the end. I have one final question. With everything you've done so far since the start of Pokemon Go to AR photography to going to GoFest, what do you consider your biggest accomplishment when it comes to Pokemon Go? Ooh, 
I think the thing that I feel the proudest of would be like I have stayed in the AI community. I have not given up. Like I'm still posting my photos. It's 2022. I've been posting since 2017. I'm still at it. And I'm going to, if Pokemon stopped working like today, like if there was a Pokemon Go outage, I have material to be posting for the next three years. So I'm never going to stop posting. And I'm proud of myself because I'm one like to give up at some point or just move on to new hobbies. But I'm stayed pretty consistent, which is not on brand for myself. Well, thank you, Shink Science, for coming on the show. Before you do go, if people wanted to get connected with the AR photography, if they wanted to view your photos and stuff like that, how would they be able to get connected with you? By all means, please plug away. So I am on Instagram by shinyshinks.science and on Twitter by shinyshinks underscore SC. So those are my accounts, but like I was saying before, surfing through the hashtag go snapshot on either Instagram or Twitter or surfing through our notes hashtag AR of the day, just surfing through them and just let the creativity of all the AR photographers and AR editors flow through your veins. I can guarantee that you'll feel better. For sure. And for anybody listening, I'll make sure to include links to everything she said in the description of today's episode. Thank you for listening to another episode of As the Pokeball Turns. You can subscribe to this podcast on Apple, Spotify, or your podcast streamer of choice. If you want to support the show, consider becoming a Patreon by going to patreon.com slash as the Pokeball turns or by sharing the podcast with your friends and family. Feel free to follow me on all my socials by clicking the link in the description of today's show, and I'll see you next time. On the next episode of Trainer's Eyes. And then in one of the Facebook groups, somebody asked the question, you know, how old is everybody? And I saw how many people were my age or even older that were playing that did it either as a couple or just to get outside or for different reasons. And then I thought, okay, so I'm not the only one my age playing.